Hey everybody, this is a makeup um, class two, three, class three for our baptism class. Um, and I just want to run through a little reminder of what we've already talked about. We talked about that we all belong to God, that God breathed his spirit into us and God's name is written on our soul, um, just like Woody and Buzz. Um, we... I've talked about we are a follower of Jesus. That's why we are um, baptized because Jesus was baptized and we know all of this because the Bible tells us so. Um, in our second class, we talked about how we are all the same and we're all different. We all have hands and feet and pumping hearts, pumping blood through our bodies, but we're all different. We all have gifts in different areas. Um, we took a spiritual gift survey and kind of talked about what we were some things that we were better at and some things we were not so great at. And it's all okay because we are so important to the body of Christ because we are all here to build the kingdom of God. And we played the rubber band and the string game and had a, fun, a lot of fun doing that. In this third class that we have just finished, um, we talked about kind of that, you know, we can be the same and different all at the same time. Um, the same is kind of true for the role that we have in this world. And we understand it as servant leadership. We, um, and we know someone who was a servant leader and that someone is Jesus. Jesus was a servant and a leader. And if you can think about those things, sometimes we think um, those things are kind of opposite, but they're actually the same. And it's a very important way that Jesus served the world in that Jesus wanted us to serve the world. Um, but how do we know this? We know this because the Bible tells us so. And we read from the Children's Storybook Bible, which is one of my favorites. So if you all want to just look at the picture while I briefly read the story, it's called um, God is Humble, Jesus Becomes a Servant, and it comes from John 13. So let me read this to you. Jesus and his disciples gathered in Jerusalem. Their feet were dirty from walking the dusty roads, telling people about God's dream. They didn't have paved roads. They were all dusty. Think about how dusty your cars get when they go on the paved roads. That's how dusty and dirty people's feet got. So the disciples started arguing over which one of them was the greatest. Jesus got up and tied a towel around his waist. He took a basin of water and began to wash his feet and his friends to dry them on a towel wash the feet of his friends and dry them on a towel. Jesus' friends were shocked. That is what a servant does. That's the servant's job, they shouted. But Jesus quietly continued washing their feet. When it was Peter's turn, he jumped up. Master, you will never wash my feet. You cannot be my disciple, said Jesus. Lord, cried Peter, wash my feet, my hands, my head, all of me. After Jesus had finished washing their feet, he took off the towel and sat down again. Do you understand what I have done? He asked. You call me Lord and teacher, but I have washed your feet like a servant. You must follow my example. The leader is the servant of all. You must be as a servant to each other. No one is more important than anyone else. I want you to love one another the way that I love you. So Jesus was saying that, you know, nobody's is more important than anybody else. We are all equally important. And Jesus wanted us to live by his example, but also wanted us to um, be the example to other people. So like Jesus didn't just tell people and tell all these stories and then expect them to go out and do it. Jesus um, told the stories and then acted them out and then shared that with the rest of the world. And Jesus didn't do all of it for us. He um, showed us how it was done and that so that we could be servants with Christ to go out into the world. It would be kind of like me saying, look, it's really important when you come to worship that you are clean and showered. But then if I showed up to worship and was like muddy and stinky and my hair was sticking up all over the place, that's not being a very good example for me to you. I didn't show you very well what I needed you to do. I told you about it, but I didn't actually show you how to do it. And what if like I was teaching you how to make an omelet? What if I just 
made the omelet for you and presented it to you and set it in front of you. That's not a very good way for you to learn how to make an omelet either for me to just do it for you. So Jesus was very hands-on. Jesus was, it was very important that we live by example and not just any example, but that we lead by Jesus's example. And Jesus taught us about serving by serving. So ways, when then we talked about in the class, ways that we can be a servant leader in the church, in the community. So I want you to pause for a second and maybe make a list. Make a list of all the ways that you volunteer um, in the school, maybe. Maybe ways that you volunteer in the community, maybe on the teams that you're a part of. What are, how do you use your gifts to serve other people in the community? And then think about making a list, too, of the ways that you serve in worship. And we talked about that a little bit um, the last time we were together and we wrote it down on that whiteboard. You know, um, taking the candle into worship, um, participating by praying the Lord's Prayer together. Pause here for a moment and just make a list of ways that you are a servant leader in our community and congregation. And once you've made that list and have kind of talked about it a little bit, um, we're not going to do this part here, but you're welcome to do it at home. May, uh, here in worship, at, in the class, we made crescent rolls. Now, if you want to hear all about how not to make crescent rolls, just it, you know, use aluminum foil instead of wax paper. No matter what it says on the box, do not put wax paper in the oven. Use aluminum foil. But that I learned something as I went nobody was a servant leader to me apparently somewhere along my life I did not learn that lesson about not putting wax paper in the oven anyway if there's any way for you to make something or create something new that you've never done before and do it in a way that you're teaching and learning together not just a parent doing it for you or you doing it for your parents or an adult but like working together to make something and we did crescent rolls you could make an omelet um, anything that you can think of that you think would be fun. But we took that bread and we also had a couple of those sparkling grape juices that we love so much. And we had plates and napkins and cups and every kid took a turn setting the table and handing out the crescent rolls. And then we ate it together, much like we do at communion here in worship. And we did that because when we come here on a Sunday morning, communion is the main focus of our worship service. Um, at least that's what I believe, is that that is the most important part of our worship service together, is that when we come to the table, that is for everybody. We all get to share it. And it's a way for us to remember that we are servant leaders. And it's a way for us to remember that Christ was the original servant leader. And we need to make sure that we are representing Christ in the world, not representing other things. So that's why we practice it every single Sunday in worship. And how do we know all this? How do we know that Christ gathered with his disciples at the table? We know because the Bible tells us so. So if you will look, we are going to look at the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, big 11, can't see my, oh, big 11, verse 23 through 25. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 25 says, For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And it's also, I love that word remembrance, because it makes us think about it. It makes us go back to that time, to the scriptures. But it also is a way that we are remembered to the body of Christ. Um, we attach ourselves back to the body of Christ, just in our mind and in a way to remember that that is what we are doing. So I hope that helps a little bit. I know I've talked pretty fast through this, but um, just remember that we um, come together to be servant leaders. And part of why we are baptized is we are promising to be servant leaders like Christ in the world. 
I hope you all have a great time. I hope I get to see you this coming Sunday. I've sent an email out talking about um, confessions of faith. So we'll talk a little bit more about that at our next class. Hope you're well. Bye.